what's up guys i hope everyone's perfect and uh, i hope you all could understand even a little bit from my last video which was the first video on the series of oil and gas data analysis and machine learning so what i tried to explain in the first video was about newton raphson's method and how you can solve complicated equations which mathematically they are known as transcendental equations you can try to solve them using um, an iterative approach I explained uh, the concept using a for loop in uh, the while loop in the last lecture. You can do uh, the same using for loop and various other looping customizations that you can find out, right? And today, uh, I think I, I could not connect with a few students in the last video about what Newton Raphson's effect is, uh, Newton Raphson's method is. Yes, it's out of the scope because we are really focusing on how to apply these concepts in uh, Python, but just to give a heads up uh, and try to give a you know sneak into the concept what newton raphson's method is and where it comes from here it is so as you can see it's a very important concept in reservoir engineering with python so it will take you a long way it will be very handy if you understand taylor series and the newton raphson's effect uh, uh, in the coming lectures right so what newton raphson's effect is it's basically a way to update the guess of a root of a, of a function uh, over multiple iterations. So suppose you have a function or any random function you can imagine, right? And you draw a curve on the XY plane, right? And suppose it crosses uh, the X axis at a particular point. Now, you know the equation of that function, but you know that looking at the equation, you also know that you cannot solve it. You cannot really solve it uh, by straightforward techniques. It's not a quadratic equation. It's not a uh, simple trigonometric equation. It's a very complicated equation, which is a combination of all the forms of expressions there are out there. So now you cannot do this by analytical techniques or straightforward techniques. You have to look for methods to solve this technique uh, using numerical methods, right? So that's where we use Newton Raphson's method. Now we have to find out where this function crosses the x axis. All you have in your mind is, you know, you can see that uh, uh, that looking at the graph of that function, you have an idea that the function crosses the x axis, I guess, around five or six or between five or six. Right. So you take any of these values, five or six, uh, as your initial guess. Right. And then you try to apply the Newton Raphson's effect. Remember, the first guess of your root is six whatever you can find out from the graph why the first guess is your very important part is because the closer the first guess is to your actual root the faster you will convert towards uh, the actual solution right and uh, sometimes it's fine sometimes uh, it converges like in the last example we converged really fast because the whole equation was just a simple parabola x square equals to n but there might be cases where near the root the f dash x will be tending to zero it will be almost a horizontal line in that case the convergence of the function becomes convergence of the method becomes very very slow that requires that forces us to the fact that we must always try to be very close to the actual root as far as our initial guess is concerned right so the origination of uh, uh, this uh, what do you call it? The Newton Raphson's method is from the Taylor series itself. Now, if you are an engineering student, you must know what Taylor series is. If it, if you, if you're not an engineering student, uh, this is all you need to remember. So what Taylor series says is that if you know the value of a function at any initial point X, and uh, you know, the new point X plus H and you know, the difference between X plus H and X, which is X, you can find out the value of a function at the next point. It is basically nothing but, uh, you know, uh, the two point form of a straight line, right? Y2 minus Y1 upon X2 minus X1. Uh, so if you know the slope of a line, if you know the Delta X, if you know the Delta Y, you can find out the new Y, if you know the initial Y, right? Something like that. So Taylor series, we, it has basically a lot of um, uh, additional, uh, you know, components of higher powers, but we are ignoring them. We are just taking them up to this point, uh, F dash X. So basically, if we are assuming that X plus H will be the root of the function, then the functions value at that point will be zero. 
right? That's what I'm doing. So fx plus h equals zero. Then zero equals fx plus h f dash x, right? And f dash x is the root of the function. Uh, not the root, but the differentiation of the function, right? The first derivative of the function, what do you want to call it? So h here is the difference between the new value and the old value. And I'm, I'm talking about the x-axis, right? The uh, abscissa. You're talking about the x values uh, because the root will, of course, be the x value, right? So the new x value and the old x value, the difference between both of these is called h. Okay, so ultimately it all boils down, boils down to this equation like I told in the last lecture, xn plus 1 equals xn minus something. Here's something if you try to just solve this thing which you see here, xn plus 1 equals xn minus fx upon f dash x, right? And like I said, if your uh, function's derivative is almost tending to 0, but which means graphically saying, which means that your function in the proximity of your root is almost a horizontal line, then this thing, this something will be huge. And you don't want this something to be huge because your ultimate criterion is you have to keep on iterating till the fact that the new xn plus one is almost equal to the old xn, right? And that is the stopping point for our newton raphson's method, okay? When we used to get to solve these problems in, um, uh, in our college exams, uh, the condition to truncate the newton raphson's method was provided. And that condition sounded like, keep on solving the newton raphson's method till you find out the accuracy up to the fourth decimal. So what that means is, keep on running the newton raphson's method and stop only where three to four iterations, you have repeated values up to the fourth decimal, okay? So third iteration, 5.645. Fourth iteration, 5.645 fifth iteration 5.645 so that means given that my roots are coming to be the same in every iteration that means 5.645 is my original root or approximate value of the original root right so that's all about the newton raphson's method now coming to the interesting part we will be explaining how klinkenberg's effect can be uh, you know uh, can be solved so this is going to be your first mini project in your journey to become an oil and gas data analyst, you will be solving the Klinkenberg's correction uh, using Newton Raphson's method. So that's why I was explaining all of this to you because I wanted you to come down to this. Okay. Now, for those who are uh, still not aware about Klinkenberg's effect, I'll keep it very simple. So basically, what happens in a reservoir rock uh, as the fluid tries to flow through the rocks? Uh, through the pores of the rock, what happens is liquids and gases, they have different properties, okay? As a reservoir engineer, you want to find out the most representative value of the absolute permeability of the rock sample. But there are issues. In the laboratory, mostly we try to do this experiment of permeability finding. We do this experiment using air as the fluid. Now, Mostly what happens is when you try to calculate reservoir permeability using air as the fluid or gas as the fluid, you will try to overestimate. You will try to find out a higher value of permeability rather than the actual. Why that happens and what we need to do in that case is exactly why Klinkenberg's effect is there. Okay. It's nothing but a correction we need to make. So just imagine, close your eyes and imagine there is a rock sample lying in front of you. Just imagine a grain which is lying there. Okay. There are two grains. On one grain, a liquid droplet goes and strikes. And on the other grain, a gas bubble goes and strikes. Now, you must be imagining it correctly. The fact that the liquid droplet will go on, hit it, and bang. It's there. It, it gets stuck there because it wets the surface. But the gas bubble, it tries to slip through the rock sample. It tries to slip through the uh, rock grain. It does not stick it, uh, stick to it. It just slips through. So this effect called slippage that gases exhibit creates a higher permeability or creates a higher mobility for gases, right? Gases are free flowing. Why? Because they never give uh, much love to the rock samples. They always ignore them and they move past, past the rock samples. They will never try to. So you must have heard in reservoir engineering books, gases are almost always the non-wetting phases. So ultimately, the original permeability of the rock would have been 25 milli darcies. But if you are using gas, you would have calculated 31 milli darcies. 
and that's wrong that's incorrect so you want to make sure you apply a particular correction to this value of permeability and find out the actual permeability value which is 27 milli darcy and the equation which does it for us is uh, this equation you can see third equation 6.9 kl and this this equation the equation is not important what's important is how you approach the problem okay in this case we want to find out the actual value which is 27 milli darcy's rather than the 31 31 milli darcy's which is more like the initial guess of the permeability right now let's see what we did over here <clears throat> Okay, as you can see, equation three can be used to calculate the absolute permeability when only one gas permeability measurement, which is kg. So kg is the 31 milli darcy in the examples I just gave. So you have the gas permeability value, but that's the incorrect. It's more like the initial guess of permeability. Um, so that's the estimation that you have made. Then we use this equation. This non-linear equation can be solved iteratively by using the newton raphsons iterator methods. The proposed solution can be conveniently written as this. Okay. It's nothing but this, this thing written for permeability. Okay. K I plus one. I means the level of iteration. So I plus one at iteration K is equals to I at iteration K minus F K I upon F dash K I. Okay. Nothing but the Newton Raphson's method. Okay. So after solving for F dash X, we, uh, we have F dash K I equals to 4.416 K I. Uh, to the power minus 0 0.36 plus pm okay and here k means kl okay because liquid permeability is the original permeability you want to find out okay so we want to find out that thing and when when you write the entire function in terms of kl you will have so this this not this is nothing but fkl equals to zero okay and you can write kl and k interchangeably then you perform newton raphson's method and here is the most interesting part. If you want to find out where I brought this from, it's Kurtzi Tarek Kemet. You can go and read that there. Okay. Now let's get into the action mode. Enter. So the permeability, this is a, again a question I have taken from Tarek Kemet. The permeability of a cold plug is measured by air. One only measurement is made at the mean pressure of 2.15 to PSI. The air permeability is 46.6 milli darcy's. Estimate the absolute permeability of the core sample, which is KL. Compare the result with the actual permeability, which is given to be 23.66 milli darcy's. Now, this is the actual reservoir engineering calculation that you have made. And you want to check if you can do the same using Python. Okay. And we can see, we, we want to see how close we get to this value. Okay. So, the first step is input enter the first gas of uh, absolute permeability kl and then you can conv convert it to a floating point number then you apply the newton raphson's effect which is again you know similar to the code you take the pm the mean pressure also from the user and then you provide the gas permeability which is calculated to be 46.6 milli darcy's okay air permeability and then you print it so just a correction i i said that it, the gas permeability is more like the initial gas but here we have even better case, the gas permeability, we can assume it to be some sort of constant because the Klinkenberg's effect formula assumes that kg is a constant, but we are asking KL, initial guess of KL uh, as a value. So we can assume it to be around this 46.6 only and see how it converges. Okay. So we press shift plus enter. Run anyway. So enter your first guess of absolute permeability. I will take it around. Like I said, uh, we can take this gas permeability itself to be the initial guess. Okay. So I will take 46. Okay. Uh, mean pressure is provided in the function 2.152. Gas permeability is 46.6. You can see 22.84 is your calculated value of permeability and 23.66 is the actual value of permeability. So you are very close in the, you know, in the calculation, you are very close. The actual permeability was around 23.6 and what you calculated was around 23. So you can see how brilliant this method is. We can try to solve it again using one more uh, initial guess. Let's say our initial guess is now 27. Okay. And the mean pressure is 2.152. Uh, the air is 46.6 again. 
and you can see it's again around 22.84 you can do this multiple times uh, the fundamental of course is the same like i explained in the last lecture we are taking uh, you can see the actual value minus the original value is greater than equals to 0.01 you can take it as small as you want it to so i have taken 0.01 you can take it 0.001 0001 you know keep going and you will find out the best accuracy you want okay uh, let's do it for one final time uh, let's take the initial guess as 40 then the mean pressure is 2.152 the k air is um, 46.6 .6. and the final value is again 22.84 so it feels like according to the computer 22.84 is in fact the final value of permeability so this is it uh, for this lecture and I will be coming up with more such projects and more such concepts in the coming videos. Thanks a lot guys. See you next time. This is Vivian Shu signing off Petroleum from Scratch.